lunch crowd right now, but uh, for those of you who stayed, thanks for listening. I'm going to present to you in the next half hour all the recent progress in tests of the electroweak interactions at Hadron Colliders, includes the Tevatron and the LHC. And uh, I've enlisted uh, Joaquin Soroya paintings to help uh, illustrate things as we move along. The scope of my talk is as follows. We'll cover recent progress in W physics, including the W mass and its production asymmetry, Z and Drelian cross sections and angular distributions, di boson physics and, uh, in relation with triple gauge couplings, and lastly, tri bosons, vector boson scattering, and quartic gauge couplings. One thing I won't be covering is vector boson plus jet studies. That will be a part of Chiara's talk in the QCD summary tomorrow. There are two large stories going on in electroweak physics at colliders right now. One is the attempt to uh, overconstrain the standard model via precision electroweak measurements. You know, for about the last 10 iChips or so, people have shown a plot like this, which shows the relationship between the top mass, the W mass, and the Higgs mass. And you try and predict, say, what the Higgs mass is, knowing the other two. Or even before we discovered the top, we attempted to predict the top this way. And now that we've measured M top and M Higgs very precisely, we now have a global overconstraint, uh, which has a very reasonable p-value of order 20%. But now we've essentially flipped the script in the sense that M top and M Higgs are so well known that the indirect constraints on MW and the weak mixing angle are now better than the direct measurements we themselves. And so now they're chasing us instead of the other way around. And the question is, can a WZ experiment catch up with them? Alternatively, uh, at the energy frontier, the run one data set from the LHC is now uh, providing us TEV scale tests of single and multiple electroweak boson production. Atlas, for example, can observe Drillian lepton pairs with masses up to 1500 GV, or Z boson pairs up to 900 GV. And similarly, very high momentum production in the WZ sector in trilepton events at CMS. And as we approach this TEV scale, it allows us to test uh, electroweak symmetry breaking there directly to see if the Higgs plays an exclu exclusive role there or not. Moving on to topics in W physics, the Tevatron is still the king of uh, W mass measurements. CDF and D0 have the world's most precise measurements based on really only a fraction of their data, 20% and 50% respectively. And they have very nice templates modeling about a million uh, Ws here, about two million w Ws here. They also have very precise models of lepton momentum and missing energy. And based on that, they are able to estimate the W mass from a template fit. Now, the kinds of ingredients you need to do that to the desired accuracy is a precision lepton energy scale as good as 0.01% in some cases, as well as a 1% uh, precision model of uh, vector boson recoil. And they build this up from the copious control samples they've accumulated over the years. In the end, <clears throat> they get a precision from CDF of 19 MeV in the W mass, 23 from D0, compared to 33 uh, from the LEP experiments. And putting that all together, you see a very nice consistency and a world average precision combining them of 15 MeV. Now keep in mind that the indirect constraint now is 11 MeV, so we could, we could try and do better. Should we try and do better? Well, if you look at the error budget for these measurements, the biggest ones are statistical and PDFs. They haven't used up all their statistics, and with just a factor of two improvement in PDFs, perhaps using their own uh, experimental measurements, for example, as I'll point out later, and then incremental improvement elsewhere, they believe the final Tevatron result can get all the way down to 9 MeV, and then this error bar here will be smaller than the indirect constraint here, which would be a, a worthy goal. Meanwhile, in Geneva, the LHC is long uh, coveted to do the same thing. They have excellent detectors. They have tens of millions of W candidates, so that's not an issue. However, there's three problems they're going to have to solve before they get there. The biggest one is PDFs. You know, C quarks and gluons play a much stronger role in W production at the LHC than they do at the Tevatron. And in order to get 10 MeV precision or, or better, we're going to have to know them at least twice as well as we currently do. So that involves some precise measurements of uh, vector boson production. Momentum scale, well, I think we'll get to where the Tevatron is, but it takes a lot of work uh, to understand things to the extent that they do, and that work has not yet been accomplished. And then lastly, the recoil model in missing energy. This is challenging in the LSC environment due to the presence of large pileup, which really uh, spoils the missing energy resolution. However, if you ask a bunch of optimists how this might evolve, the ultimate goal could be as low as 5 MeV. 
but I think it's a pretty long road to get there. But one step along that road is uh, improving PDFs via precise measurement of the charge asymmetry in W production. <clears throat> With the millions of uh, events we have available, we can precisely measure the differential charge asymmetry as a function of lepton rapidity, and this probes the up to down quark valence uh, PDF ratio as a function of parton x. There's a recent CMS measurement. They used a mere 20 million W candidates and uh, a very precise missing energy model here of uh, W plus candidates here on the left and W minus candidates on the right where you can see a clear preponderance of plus over minus. It's really just an artifact of the proton having more up quarks than down for the most part. And you can convert that into an asymmetry measurement of 0.1% precision as a function of lepton rapidity. And you can see from the size of these error bars and the size of the theory error bars that uh, this has obvious constraining power for all the PDFs. D0 uh, has also measured the W asymmetry recently. The Tevatron has really only exploited a fraction of their data until very recently. They have a seven inverse femtobarn uh, muon asymmetry measurement with very small error bars compared to pre-LHC PDFs. And they're also able to directly reconstruct the W rapidity using uh, the electron and missing energy four vectors. And that will also have a good deal of constraining power compared uh, to old PDFs. LHCB also has a stake in this game. They have unique access uh, to high lepton rapidity, all the way up to 4.5. And uh, new for this conference, they presented a measurement based on one inverse femtobarn, which constrains the PDFs in an X range that's really inaccessible by all the other experiments. They have an overlap region with CMS and ATLAS, however, and you can see from this bottom plot that uh, they agree quite well in this region. So this is a very interesting complementary result from our LHCB colleagues. To see how this affects PDFs, uh, CDF combined, uh, CMS combined their W asymmetry measurement with HERA deep inelastic scattering to see how this would improve uh, the d-valence quark, for example. And you can see at very low x, uh, with this blue error band, that we are realizing quite a bit of improvement. Similarly, the Tevatron compared their W asymmetry constraints with one of the latest uh, PDFs, and in PDF 2.3, which includes even some LHC data, and even taking that into account, you can see with their very small error bars, they are going to make a big uh, improvement over that one. So hopefully, with these improvements, that will set the stage for more precise uh, electric measurements in both the W sector and the Z sector. So moving on to Z and Drillian physics, there's been a lot of progress in the Drillian cross-section at the LHC. Uh, both CMS and ATLAS have measured the 7 TeV cross-section as a function of mass, ranging from 15 all the way to 1,500 uh, GeV in lepton pair mass. To give you an idea of the size of these samples, uh, CMS and ATLAS currently have more lepton pairs uh, from Zs than the entire LEP plus SLD sample. So, you know, 20 million, something like that. Or actually, that's per experiment. <clears throat> And so with that kind of precision, we can learn a great deal. And in fact, uh, we obtain excellent agreement with next to next to leading order uh, predictions over 10 decades in cross-section. One, two of the things we've learned from this is that uh, if you want to describe the low mass data accurately, next to next to leading order QCD corrections are important. Uh, as you can see from this Atlas and CMS comparison, which shows better agreement with next to next to leading order. Meanwhile, at the high mass uh, stage, Next to leading order electroweak and also photon induced production of dilepton pairs is also important. In fact, if you want a precise measurement at the TV scale of dilepton production, it's essential to understand what the PDF of the photon is. It's a new problem for us to deal with. A new measurement for this conference is an 8 TV measurement of the uh, Drellian cross section, where we also see excellent agreement with candidates all the way out to 2000 GeV. And then CMS, combining uh, their 8 TV data with their 7 TV data, construct a differential double ratio in the mass shape. This is measured for the first time, and since so many things cancel, you get a very precise QCD prediction, uh, and the data seem to agree with it quite well at this point. It'll be interesting to construct this uh, from the 13 TV data once it becomes available next year. They've also studied other uh, production properties, including the transverse momentum and uh, rapidity of Z boson candidates. Uh, both Atlas has done this at 7 TV, CMS at 8 TV, and you can compare that with a number of generators which each have their strengths and weaknesses in various corners of phase space. You can see, for example, that uh, uh, Resboss does poorly at high boson PT, but that's because it doesn't have next to next leading order uh, corrections, which would be necessary to describe that. 
Atlas has also compared their data with uh, a bunch of different models. And again, what you see is next to next leading order does pretty good at high transverse momentum. Uh, resummed Monte Carlos do pretty good at low momentum, and the part-time shower Monte Carlos do something in between. Uh, so one of the things we can learn from that and attempt to do is, is to tune uh, the Monte Carlo so that you ha have at least one uh, Monte Carlo model that agrees with our data quite well. Atlas has attempted this uh, by creating a, a new tune for Pythia 8 and a next to leading order Poheg tune, and that gives you 1% agreement over the entire momentum spectra from about 1 GeV to 100 GeV. One of the applications uh, in the electroweak sector of this data is to measure the weak mixing angle. In the dilepton center of mass, the lepton angle with respect to the axis of the quark momentum uh, gives you uh, an angular distribution that's sensitive to interference effects, most importantly, the vector axial vector interference of the z uh, at the z mass. And that's that gives you an odd cos theta term proportional to the weak mixing angle. And proton antiproton, uh, the quark axis direction can be well estimated since it's highly correlated with the proton direction. But in proton-proton collisions, we don't have access to that, uh, and you can see that this actually dilutes, so we, we often make the wrong choice for the quark axis, and this dilutes the statistical power of the sample to do that. We nonetheless attempt to do so, and Atlas has a measurement based on their 7TV data. Looking here at the angular distribution of central forward electron pairs, you see a clear excess of forward over backward events, which you can convert into a forward-backward asymmetry as a function of mass, and then extract the weak mixing angle from a template fit. When they do so, they get something that's about six times worse than the world average and about 1.8 sigma lower. It's systematics dominated uh, by PDF effects. I'll say a word about that later. Meanwhile, the Tevatron D0 uh, has a new result of the four backward asymmetry based on 10 inverse femtobarns. They don't really have the same limitations in PDFs uh, and dilution that, that uh, the LHC does, and they have a measurement that's only three times less precise than the world average. Now, when CDF comes in with a comparable measurement, and I fully expect them to, then uh, the Tevatron combination will then be on the same footing as LEP and SLD. And so we won't talk about merely the LEP plus SLD combination any longer. That's something to look forward to. I was also pleased to hear that low energy experiments also plan to have a piece of action uh, that's uh, equivalent. At the LHC, the prospects are uh, maybe a bit more pessimistic, and that's because the systematics are dominated by the PDF uncertainty. This has to improve basically by a factor of five or 10 in order to get down to an interesting precision. And uh, it's hard to see how that's gonna happen anytime soon. But uh, in the end, what we're shooting for is a target uh, of getting below one times 10 to the minus four in precision for the weak mixing angle so that we can start over constraining again. Now moving on to triple gauge boson couplings. How do we uh, test how gauge boson inter interact with one another? Well, the main paradigm is to use an effective field theory for generic new physics effects at some high energy scale lambda, you can construct an operator product expansion, retain uh, terms of the lowest dimensional order, in this case dimension six, and append them with Wilson coefficients which you attempt to measure. Before electroweak symmetry breaking, there's five such operators available that preserve uh, gauge invariance. Three of them are CP even and two of them are CP odd. And then you break electroweak symmetry and you get an effective Lagrangian that looks like this. It has uh, triple gauge boson couplings, Higgs, VV couplings, and quartic interactions. And uh, you expect to see WW gamma uh, triple interactions, WWZ, and three CP even uh, coefficients describing them. And if, you, if there's any kind of anomalous behavior due to these operators, they'll manifest themselves as uh, long tails in, in, uh, in the kinematics of diboson production. So what do the data say? Well, the LHC now has thousands of high-purity trilepton WZ candidates, and there's no evidence of uh, anomalies in the tail of the momenta. We also have tens of thousands of W gamma candidates. Here the picture is a little more complex because uh, we don't have a full next-to-next -next leading order calculation available. Uh, but uh, if we restrict ourselves to exclusive zero-jet production where those uh, effects are reduced, we do get good agreement uh, as a function of photon ET but this is something to watch out for as the uh, theory calculation improves. Z gamma production, thousands of dilepton photon candidates, but with no uh, significant excess over predictions, all the way out to the TV scale. And missing ET photon production has been looked at as well. This turns out to give the best constraint on, in this case, dimension eight neutral triple gauge couplings. ZZ production, hundreds of uh, four lepton ZZ candidates, uh, no anomalies in the shape or the rate, 
and hundreds of ZZ to 2L2 new candidates have also been seen in the 7 and 8 TV data. WW production has been measured at 7 TV by both experiments, and they both use the leading lepton PD PT distribution to constrain anomalous couplings. You see there's no evidence of anomalous uh, lepton momenta in their data. An alternative way to do this is to look at semi-leptonic events. At low uh, momentum, the signal to the background is not so great. That's this blue sliver here. But uh, as you go to higher and higher momenta, the signal to the background is not so bad, and the superior branching fraction ends up giving you a superior uh, triple gauge boson cu coupling constraint. And here's the world summary of how things are going. The best single LHC measurements in black and red are about as good as the LEP combination or the Tevatron combination, where semileptonic is leading the way. Once we adopt the 8TV data into this plot, that, those will provide uh, constraints that are about two or three times better. And then we won't talk so much about LEP2 anymore. What we will talk about are Higgs VV couplings, uh, which are in a dimension six framework are, are correlated with these couplings and should also provide uh, interesting constraints. In the end, we're essentially probing an energy scale uh, in effective field theory of order two to 500 GV for a coupling of order one. In 2012, CMS was the first to measure the WW cross-section at 8 TV. They showed this uh, at ICHEP then, and they observed about a 20% excess of our standard model predictions with about a two sigma excess uh, in significance. Uh, for this conference, ATLAS has a new result, which has a very similar conclusion about a 20% excess uh, with a, a two sigma significance. It's not statistical significance largely. Uh, these, these, are, these measurements are systematics dominated. <clears throat> so that's something to uh, look out for. However, there's no evidence of any anomalies in the kinematic distributions for these events. And uh, I, I hesitate to be enthusiastic about this only because not all of the data from run one is in and the theory calculation is being actively studied. In particular, the next to next leading order effects and resummation effects for jet vetoes, which are essential for these kinds of measurements. Finally, I'll talk about electroweak Z plus two jet production. It turns out that one of the amplitudes uh, for Z plus two jet production includes a triple gauge vector boson fusion diagram. And you can isolate this from QCD production by requiring a VBF topology for die jets, which includes a large invariant mass and a big rapidity gap. Uh, CMS attempted to exploit this with their 7TV data a year or two ago and found a 2.6 sigma evidence for such a, such a thing. But now both experiments have looked at their 8TV data and both of them are reporting five sigma evidence uh, for this kind of process uh, where Atlas was the first to, to, to publish this. The cross sections they observe are consistent with next to leading order predictions. And you can see from the Atlas data here that uh, as you go higher and higher in diget mass, you can only explain the data by introducing an electroweak component uh, to the production. With these uh, large data samples available now in this regime, you can do all sorts of tests uh, on how uh, you know, generators behave in this area. You can study uh, rapidity gaps, jet vetoes, and so on. So it'll be a very important uh, engineering study for future measurements of vector boson fusion production and vector boson scattering. This summarizes all the Atlas Di boson measurements there's good agreement, uh, modulo the exceptions I talked about earlier in W gamma and WW. And similarly for CMS, where you can see that uh, we have seven and eight TV measurements for all the heavy di boson modes. Finally, moving on to quartic gauge couplings. What happens when four of these guys get together? Well, in the standard model, it's certainly possible for this to happen. You can have four W couplings, two W two Z, two W two gamma, uh, two W Z gamma, and uh, if you introduce a dimension eight operator product expansion, uh, then 19 new uh, Lagrangian terms become available to you, including ones that correspond to neutral uh, beyond the standard model uh, coupling such as 4Z. Experimentally, this is manifested as a uh, triboson or vector boson scattering phenomena. And those phenomena are related in a very complex way to the underlying effective field theory. It's very complex uh, phenomenology here. The first attempt to do this was to examine two photon production of W pairs at CMS. The idea here is that uh, you can isolate this from, from ordinary WW production by the fact that there's essentially no underlying event uh, to their creation. And so you look for a lepton pair pointed at nothing. And uh, we have a couple such candidates. It's consistent with ex expectations. But that uh, limit alone gave us uh, a better uh, limit on gauge couplings, uh, 100 times better than LEP. So this was actually a big uh, leap forward in that regime. 
They've also looked at triboson production in the WW gamma and WZ gamma channel. The idea here is to look for anomalous uh, high PT photon tail in the data. We don't observe it. And uh, we got the first limits ever on several quartic gauge couplings, especially in this 2W Z gamma sector. Now for my last topic, I'm going to cover uh, WW scattering at the LHC. So this is uh, one of the reasons why the LHC was built. Um, and it, it answers an important question, which is, you know, the Higgs is believed to be essential to preserve vector boson scattering cross-section unitarity when you consider the scattering of two longitudinal gauge bosons. There's a, a subtle uh, fine-tuning balance here between all these diagrams uh, to control the growth of this cross-section as a function of S. Experimentally, an attractive topology is to look for same sign WW uh, vector boson production in association with two jets. And then uh, that gives you access to an interference between these three diagrams here involving boson exchange, Higgs exchange, and a quartic coupling. Any kind of anomalous behavior here uh, in the differential cross-section, say, would indicate either an extended gauge sector or new particles or, uh, you know, some kind of effective field theory leaking down. So, uh, well, I guess this is Valencia, so I'll go there. This is the holy grail of electroweak physics measurements at the LHC. <clears throat> and uh, we're, very, uh, we're very excited to get on board with this, with the run one data. So the ATV data have been looked at by both CMS and ATLAS for these same sign WW plus two jet events. And what ATLAS observes is as they increase the die jet mass uh, above about 500 GV or so, and then restrict themselves to die jet events that are massive and with a high rapidity gap, they see an excess in this blue events, excuse me, uh, over the backgrounds and at a rate that uh, more or less corresponds to standard model expectations. 34 observed versus 30 predicted. This gives you a cross-section in their vector boson scattering enriched region that's consistent with standard model predictions. It's 3.6 sigma significance. And it's the first evidence for vector boson scattering at the LHC. So this is quite a milestone uh, in our program. Limits were obtained on anomalous quartic gauge couplings in a unitarized model that corresponds to an energy scale of roughly 650 GeV for couplings of order one. This is what one of their events looks like. Same sign muons, two jets back to back, very massive, very large rapidity separation. CMS has presented a similar measurement uh, using a similar strategy, although uh, a somewhat tighter working point, uh, but very similar sensitivity expected for vector boson scattering. They observed 12 events and expected nine, uh, and this corresponds to a two sigma uh, excess coming from vector boson scattering processes with uh, no funny distributions in either the di lepton or di jet mass. And this gives a, a cross section consistent with next leading order calculations. They also use that to constrain quartic gauge couplings, and you can also use it, use it to constrain uh, the, the doubly charged Higgs sector in this uh, George Machasek uh, triplet model. They now have limits as low as 20 femtobarns on the, on the cross-section. So the future prospects for uh, vector boson scattering are great, looking ahead to run two. Uh, you know, we expect several modes are expected to be seen, uh, including WZ, uh, maybe opposite sign WW, uh, and others. And there's even the potential uh, with the phase one data alone to identify at the five sigma level some kind of anomalous uh, operators at the one TV scale. So that's definitely something to look forward to for IHEP 2016. To summarize, W and Z physics using uh, tens of millions of events now are giving ultra precise tests of PDFs and quantum field theory calculations. And this is in, in preparation for the final assault on uh, further constraining the precision electroweak sector. The LHC is now the leading laboratory for understanding gauge boson self-interactions uh, with di boson data approaching the TV scale. And the great new news, the vector boson scattering era is upon us. And now we're posed uh, to directly test electroweak symmetry breaking in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for this illuminating wrap-up, and we do have time for a couple of questions. 
Jeff, you, as you mentioned that um, uh, WMAS measurement is not limited by statistics at the LHC because you have uh, large uh, yes. uh, data sets, but by systematics and probably pile up is among them because measuring sub-GV accuracy, missing ET for 100 interactions per crossing is challenging. Yeah. Did you consider running for like relatively brief period of time, like a month at a lower luminosity in order to collect data for this measurement? There, there have been, you know, proposals like that, but, you know, in order to collect, say, you know, many inverse at that low of a pileup would take more than a month. It would take a long time. And so I think we'd have to be highly motivated uh, to want to go in that direction. Uh, and I, I don't think we're so motivated right now. We'd much, much rather do searches. Uh, about this uh, cross-section of the WW, yes. I think uh, we don't think anymore it's a statistical fluctuation at, at in one experiment at one energy. It's seen everywhere, right? And, yeah. and uh, if you say that WZ is not uh, hurting us, then the, the idea that it's a PDF is not very appealing I, either. So uh, I don't share your, <laughs> let's say, relatively uh, lighthearted comment about that. Um. Well, you know, uh, I mean, if you if you kind of closely inspect how the uh, how the cross section is estimated, you see that there's room for at least another four picobarns, say, from higher order effects or other things that aren't included. Uh, that turns two sigma into one and a half sigma, roughly, and maybe then it's not so exciting. You know, also as I said, not all the data is in. And uh, when it is, that might be more decisive. I, I, I would hold out for all the results to come in before coming to any conclusion. You, it's, you blame it on missing uh, calculations. It could be a cocktail of, you know, the systematics are one sigma off than we think they are. It could be, uh, you know, four picobarns or more shift in the cross section due to higher order effects. There's also uh, this, these jet vetoes of course, give you uh, some difficult resumming to do. Not present in WZ. Uh, that's right, that's right. Okay. So that, that's a difference between WW and WZ that's important, in fact. Any other urgent questions? I don't see anybody. So let's thank the speaker again.